Today we're running a new Unity project. I'm going to show you how to create a simple collection game called Losing My Marbles. So the premise of the game is simple. Each marble is a memory. I'm going to collect the marble. It's going to tell me something about my past, my character's backstory that I've forgotten about. Marbles are going to be behind barriers. Doors and walls are going to be openable if you've collected enough coins. Okay, welcome back to the final tutorial. Here I'm going to show you how to enable any text files that may be associated with your memories, and I'm going to show you how to put a timer in your game and hook it all up. I'm just going to delete this marble from last time round, so I'm only working with one marble. This, I'm going to renumber it marble one. It is memory one, and it contains the audio file for memory one, and it is an audio source that does not have play on awake checked. On-screen text is controlled by a script that is on the FPS controller, the GM script. And if I want text, I need to enable the text box there. Once I've done that, if I click this drop-down box, it enables this array. You can make an array any size you like, and an array is useful for holding lots of different sorts of information. I'm going to make this 11. There's a good reason for this. Element 0 is going to remain blank. If you remember, marble1 has the memory file memory1 and the memory number of memory1. This is number1, quite clearly. Any text that goes with memory1 is going to go into element1 box. Elements 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on. I've told my students that they can have a maximum of 10 memory files in their game. You may want to work with fewer, but because the first one is always tagged 0, Give yourself one more than you need. Into element box one, I can type any old text that I like. And now if I go and collect my marble over here, it will automatically display any old text on the screen for five seconds, and then the text disappears. But it's cooler than that. I don't just have to type. I can go into my planning sheet here. I can copy the text that's in there, and I can paste that same text into there and go over and collect it. As soon as I do that, it will display this that text. This is why you plan in Excel first, so you can copy and paste all of your text very quickly into the different element boxes in the GM script. If you're one of my students, your class teacher will show you how you can work with the style elements but the basic gist is, this controls the font color, this controls the font size, and if it's going to be lots of text, don't forget to click word wrap so that it goes off one line and starts the next one, rather than disappearing off the side of the page. The final thing I'm going to show you how to do today is hook up a timer so that if the timer runs down to zero, the game begins again. The first thing we're going to have to do is create a canvas to display our text. We do this by going to the hierarchy, right-clicking, and going down to UI, User Interface, and creating a canvas. That canvas essentially creates another screen that's going to be overlaid on top of our screen to create what is in effect a heads-up display. With canvas selected, right-click again, go back down to UI, and select text. This will automatically make the text a child of the canvas, as you can see here. The timer script needs to be dragged onto the canvas itself, not the text. Drag the script onto there, and then on the canvas layer here, go into the inspector, and you can see the timer script down here. There are three variables to work with. The timer text itself, the number of seconds left before we reach zero, and finally, the name of the level it needs to load. For the timer text, all you have to do is drag text into text here. And this text, whatever is in the script, will now appear on the screen. If you briefly click Game, you can see here this is where the text is appearing. I'm going to go back into Scene View. I'm going to keep it at three seconds to begin with, just to test that it works. Finally, when the timer reaches zero, it needs to reload the game, which means it needs to know the name of the level. This name here exactly as you've written it. So I have written DRH, all lowercase, Dr. H, that's the name of the level I'm going to load. 
if I now push play, my timer counts down to zero, and then it says game over, and it offers me the chance to press P to play a game. Don't worry about the lighting issue or the lack of controls when it does reload, as this won't happen when you export your final version out. Some versions of Unity have this issue that I am assured is being fixed for the next release. If I briefly skip out of this, there is one troubleshooting issue that might happen when you press P to restart your level. You might get an error down here that says something about the build settings. If this is the case, all you need to do is go File, Build Settings, and then add the open scene. Dr. H. You don't need to click build as this will export your finished game and we're not finished yet. You can just click the red X. Thank you very much for watching this very short series of tutorials. I wish you all the best. I wish you all the best with your memory backstory games.